Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and now this is a quick update on the situation at the Kharkiv front. So at the Kharkiv front, uh, Russian forces continue to put pressure on uh, Ukraine through the Kharkiv front and this uh, continues to be what I feel is a pinning operation. I still do not believe this is a major offensive in the sense that it was at the beginning to get to the current lines and uh, this is where the line stops. The uh, We have to put into perspective also you know, where if, where the Russians were uh, the furthest they have went. So previously, I believe, if I'm not wrong, the Russians reached uh, Sakuni and uh, they were here over at this region uh, near Ruska Lozova, at this highway region. Uh, they have some of these grounds at uh, Shita, Shitakobe, Rezdolirivka and uh, Stadisautiv. And this is actually where the line previously was and uh, the Ukrainians were challenging, challenging them over at Pishane region and the Russians have this crossing over here and are uh, controlling everything else on the other side of this uh, uh, Kharkiv of, of the no Sevesky Donetsk River and, the, and everything here is all Russian. So the so now the front line is only here. Uh, this is only the front line and uh, there is good reasons for this because firstly it is very close to the Russian uh, border and uh, another problem is actually the roads. The road system here is uh, pretty bad. Um, if uh, if the Russians push too far, uh, this the roads is just like this. Uh, if I draw it out, you probably can see it better. This is these are the roads. These are the main roads. So the if imagine the Russians push further south of this position, they're gonna have a lot of problem in terms of defense, uh, in terms of uh, logistic to move troops around from one front to another front may be pretty challenging. Uh, I think the Russians, if they want to push, maybe they can go up to this position, maybe along this road around Vasile and Mali Vasile, maybe Paramoha, Ukrenka, Boraika, maybe even the South Vikini South Div, which was previously one of the positions the Russians held. And um uh, yeah, maybe around here. They, they 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 can actually go around here. So there is not very far the Russians would push uh before they become uh entangled in the battle for Kharkiv. So I don't think the Russians is going to push push very far. And in the current situation, so in terms of the situation right now, uh, at the Lipsy sector, the Russian forces still continue to put pressure over from Zelene. They are bombarding Russian uh, Ukrainian forces over at Nekushne. And they are also uh, holding back the Ukrainian counterattack over at Kliboke while the Russians conducted a offensive operation towards Lipsy, where the Ukrainians are holding the defense around here. There is a major uh, reach or no major high ground uh, in this area here. This is all high ground around here. And um, so the Russians are probably, you know, determined to actually at least control the high ground uh, to put the Ukrainians on the back foot. The Ukrainians clearly can, uh, can still defend uh, pretty well from the other side of the high ground on the other side of Lipsy. Lipsy is in this uh, valley kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, the, the battle will continue. Ukrainians don't don't like to lose uh, grounds. So, it's just what it is. So, this is the current situation over the Lipsy sector. The battle still continues. And uh, anyway, this this is just a Russian claim. This is not a capture. So, and, uh, and uh, over on this uh, Staritsia region, we have a refresh of fighting. Uh, renewal of fighting over uh, Astalicia. Uh, the previous fighting was a week ago, so the Russians are starting to push again over the Astalicia region. So that's about it. There's constant bombardment over at Snenikove. Snenikove. We're not sure if this any if it's a kind of an incursion or it's just shelling. Ukrainian forces, however, are uh, accumulating forces in the region, uh, particularly over in the Ipitske forest region. There is a accumulation of forces around Ibitske, and there's also an accumulation of forces around uh, south of uh, Kedyshev, uh, so on the west of Voschans. So there is some Ukrainian uh, accumulation of forces. I'm not sure if the Ukrainians are going to try to do some massive counter-offensive operation to retake uh, Stalicia and um, Puruvaka, I think. Uh, Puruvaka, correct. So, and uh, of course, attack 
northward into Okeseve and Hedi Chef so that they can relieve worst chance. That's also a high possibility that the Ukrainians may try to do this. And uh, over at the worst chance region, uh, the, the, over this area here, the Russian forces are putting pressure at, on Taikei. Uh, however, we, we have acknowledgement from the Raiba side uh, from the Russian side, pro-Russian side, that they finally realized that Taikei is not under Russian control. So this also shows that uh, this area here, despite their initial claims that the Russians are conducting clearing operations previously, is actually uh, just based on uh, their information on the ground. And since then, they do not really have more information that the Ukrainians actually retook uh, Taikei or actually at least uh, the Russians have never really took, taken it. The... The situation at was chance is uh quite bad for both sides. So both the front line have not changed. Russian forces are holding up over in this uh, aggregate factory. Ukrainians are holding up over at this uh, high rise building region. For both cases, uh, both sides are using air strikes and guided missile strikes. Both you no know, the Russians are using the FAPs, the Ukrainians are using the JDAMs, and they're both bombarding each other's uh uh and reinforce and entrench positions in the in the beast major buildings and um uh, yeah both are dishing out and are receiving the same shit at, from each other so uh currently there is no uh situ no difference both are using uh, bombardments to try to wear down the the wear down each other and uh, there are further geolocations uh of uh fpv drone strikes uh being conducted within for chance itself uh, which makes which means that the Ukrainians would have a lot of trouble trying to move across the city as the Russians are trying to hunt them through using FPV drones. So uh, similarly, I'm quite sure that the Ukrainians are doing the exact same thing on the Russians. Um, but uh, the, on the bright side for the Ukrainians is that they now have airstrikes supporting the operation here. JDAMs has been seen uh, bombarding uh, these buildings. Uh, not sure what is the delivery uh, delivery platform, but JDMs are uh, like guided bombs, so similar to uh, very similar to FAPs, but FAPs have bigger wings. I'm not sure JDMs have uh, such a long range, but regardless, uh, the Ukrainians are hitting back. The salience remain the same. Um, I at this moment I can't see you know how they can break through on break through, break each other. Uh, but the but in terms of the tactical situation right now, I think that the or rather the logistic situation right now, the Ukrainians have it harder because the Ukrainians have to cross the river. So you may not be able to see the river so clearly. So you can see that there's actually a Voschar river around here. There's a major river through Voschans. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the Ukrainians have this major bridge. Uh, along this uh, Hukanivska Street. And I believe there is some uh, pontoon crossings over on the western part, oh, sorry, eastern part of uh, Voschans. So the, the Ukrainians are using all this uh, to try to reinforce. And the fact that they need to cross the to cross the river to reinforce just make them into, uh, just put them in the more disadvantageous uh, situ uh, position as the Russians do not need this. And uh, if you zoom out a bit, you'll be able to see that the Russians have the high ground uh, in the north. So that will actually you know, advantages them uh, a little bit. Uh, not much, but a little bit in terms of the strategic situation over here. So anyway, um, yeah, that's the that's the situation, situation right now over at the Kharkiv front. And the battle is still raging. The entire pinning operation is uh, pretty successful. Not in the sense that the Russians are no capturing a lot of grounds or whatnot, but the, the whole point is to draw Ukrainian forces into a major fight in this region, right next to Russian territory. And I think it has been very successful in that sense, but both sides are losing a lot of people because both sides are throwing whatever they can at each other. Major airstrikes, RTV, artilleries, FPV, drone strikes. So uh, there's a major battle around here, nothing to scoff about, nothing to laugh about. Uh, but you no, know, it is a uh, part of war. It is what the Russians have to do to stretch the Ukrainians, and the Ukrainians have no choice but to take the bait because the alternative would be a Russian breakthrough into the Kharkiv region and uh, create havoc into the rear positions if they do not hold the Russians where they are. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next.
om det.